Hi guys, so today I am here with Ask Kristen number 28. If you guys are new to my channel, these are my Q&A videos and I try to answer literally every single question that I get. So if you have any questions for me, put them in the comments below. I am here on Ask Kristen number 27 now and I'm going to try and answer all of these questions. So let's get into it. Ellie S says, as a new viewer, I was just wondering how old are you? I get this question all the time. I am actually 21. Lindsay Rose says, are you and Elle from Glam Planner good friends? Um, I wouldn't say we're good friends. I would say we're acquaintances. I have talked to her a couple of times and she's super, super nice, but I wouldn't say we're like good friends because we don't talk every single day, just a couple times. So acquaintances. Caitlin Holiday says, will you film a makeup collection video sometime? I do need to refilm one. I haven't filmed a makeup collection video in a few years. It's been a very long time. So I definitely am in the market to film one. I'm due to film one. So I will probably do that when we move into our next apartment, which is at the end of July so uh, maybe look out for one in August but don't hold me to it I hope to get one up in August then I'll try and hold myself to that but you don't hold me to it I'll hold myself to it Corey Brand says, I love your Q&A videos, Kirsten. I love you, Corey. Uh, she says, my question is, did you ever, like many girls do, have a bad body image or go through a time period of being self-conscious? I would love to hear how you gained confidence in yourself. So this is actually like a whole story in itself. So I, okay, so I feel like you... I feel like most girls, and I feel like especially for me, I started becoming more like self-conscious about myself in middle school when I was like starting to like be attracted to boys and I wanted like people to have a good image of me and I feel like middle school was my prime time for that. I didn't care about my image in elementary school, um, but middle school I feel like is when I really started like giving a shit about what I looked like. So all through middle school I had like horrible, horrible image of myself. I was super insecure. Um, in sixth grade, well like every year until like seventh grade, I didn't have braces. I got braces in seventh grade. My teeth, I had like a huge gap and I was super self-conscious about it. I was self-conscious about the fact that I was taller than most people. I was 5'5", five, five, like I'm 5'5 five, five right now and I was 5'5 five, five at like fifth grade. Like that's when I got to 5'5 five, five, and then I stopped growing but I didn't know that. I thought I was going to grow forever. So, um, I was taller than pretty much everyone. I was super skinny and lanky and I felt like, I don't know, I was just so, so self-conscious. And then when I got my braces, I was super self-conscious. And I don't know, I just wasn't confident at all through middle school. Middle school was rough. High school wasn't as bad, but I was still very self-conscious. I hated, I just, it's not that I hated the way I looked, but I just was always like, really insecure about myself and if somebody would like pick on something about me I would like jokingly like oh haha you know that's so funny but then like I would be like really beat up about it when I would go home and I don't know and I have like I don't know what it is but like I always like I overthink everything and I still do so like when someone would say something I would think about it and think about it and think about it forever like for months I would think about that one thing that person said and even if like they forgot about it I wouldn't um, so I was super self-conscious all through like school basically from middle to high school. Once I graduated high school, I felt like it all kind of just went away. I got very, I don't know, I think it's honestly the pressure of being around so many people that are the same age as you or around the same age as you that everyone like cares about what they look like and you feel like you have to care too because like you want to live up to their standards even though this, people are thinking the same exact thing. Um, so when I graduated I felt very confident. I was super confident in myself. I was confident in my body. I really was happy with the way I looked. Um, and you can see that too when you go if you go back to my Instagram like when I was like 18 19 like I took so many selfies it was so stupid um, like I was super happy with the way I looked and then I got pregnant and I was still super happy with the way I looked like even when I was pregnant I was like rocking that baby bump I was so proud of it um, like I didn't care because the only place I really gained weight was my stomach my boobs and my butt and that's like when you're pregnant, obviously you're going to gain weight in your stomach, but then boobs and butt, I was like, hell yeah, like let's do this. So I was still very, very confident while I was pregnant. Up until the day I gave birth, I was so happy with my belly. I loved everything. Um, and then postpartum, it's been pretty rough. It's been pretty rough since I've had Avery. I've been a little bit more self-conscious, and now it's a little bit different because I'm not... I don't care about my peers anymore. I don't care about the people I surround myself with or what they think um, about my body. Like, it doesn't bother me. And it doesn't bother me what anybody says about my body. It's like, I, it's just how I think lately. So it's been kind of rough. I haven't, 
I lost pretty much all the baby weight. I just have like a baby pooch still that really grinds my gears and I really want to get rid of it. And it honestly sucks because if I wear a tight shirt, it always looks like I'm either like six weeks pregnant or I have a huge food baby and it's like it just kills me and I'm not asking for you guys to be like Kristen you're so skinny your body's great that's fine thank you I appreciate that but I, it's just what I see and it's what I think so I really want to get back to that period where I really didn't really care about my body as much like I was very confident in myself but I have to work towards that which is unfortunate because I was so happy with where I was um, but it's just been an insecurity of mine lately the past year and a half and um, I'm working on it I'm really working on it Sabrina Roman says what made you decide to name Avery Avery we didn't really I don't know it just came to me I, I was in charge of the girl name Brian was in charge of the boy name if we were to have a boy and I said Avery one day it just came to my head and um, we both agreed that we liked it really when we went through the naming process it was mostly we didn't want to pick a name of someone that we already knew like we're both military brats really so we've lived everywhere and we've met thousands of people so we've heard pretty much every single name and I have never met an Avery until after I had Avery. I actually met an Avery a few months ago and he was a boy um, but we had never either one of us met an Avery before and we really liked the name so that's why we named her Avery. Car JD says, how did you tell your parents about you making YouTube videos and how did they react? So this is funny and I actually remember this. Hold on, let me get comfy. I actually remember this story really well. I didn't, I think I told my mom when I was 16 or 17 um, and I, I wanted to wait until I had 5,000 subscribers. Like that's when I was like, I'm going to tell my mom. And it's so funny because they got me one of those like flip cameras. Like if you watch my old videos, um, they were all filmed on a flip camera and I mean I don't even know what they thought I used that for to be honest but I waited until I had 5,000 subscribers and I went downstairs and I told my mom and she was just like okay cool like she didn't even I don't know I mean I think she asked to see the videos just to, like make sure I'm not doing anything crazy but yeah she was just like okay cool and then I didn't even tell my dad I'm pretty sure my little sister just found my videos and then showed my dad and that's how he found out but my parents I don't know they've never really cared about it I don't know. I mean, I'm not doing anything bad, so they shouldn't really need to care. Maggie Pardue says, would you ever do white space plan with me? Yes, I do plan to do those soon. Honey Hampshire says, how would you handle Avery as a teenager? If she ever got into drugs and alcohol, what are your thoughts on drugs and alcohol with teens? Um, if she got into smoking weed, what would be your thoughts and how would you handle it? And this has three thumbs up. So, I... Mm. Obviously going into, I think I would talk to her more so going into like 8th grade, which is when I feel like people are getting exposed to things like that, or at least that's when I was exposed to things like that was like around 8th grade, but I feel like I would have to talk to her sooner now because I feel like elementary school kids are into drugs now, but um, obviously she's going to know that's a no-no, I mean don't do that, don't do it if you wouldn't do it with your parents or in front of your parents. Um, but the thing is, if she were to get into that, the thing, the thing is here, the type of parent I want to be is I, obviously, I do want to punish her if she does do something, you know, like that or something that she needs to be disciplined for. However, I feel like sometimes that isn't quite enough. I don't feel like just being like, well, you're grounded, you can't hang out with your friends for two weeks is something that would be enough. I feel like I would have to, I would have to sort of express my feelings to her because that would be extremely disappointing for me. I would be really upset because I'm not raising Avery to do something like that. So if she were to, or if I were to find out or if she were to tell me or if another kid were to tell me that that's what Avery's doing, I would definitely express my disappointment in her. And I feel like that hits a lot of people harder than just a punishment. Like I feel like if I were, I think I got grounded once and I got my phone taken away when I was like 15 or 16 and that didn't really like affect me. Like it didn't, it didn't hurt me emotionally. I was just like, I was just pissed off because they took my phone, like whatever. But I think there was one time when my mom told me she was disappointed in me. I can't remember what it was for, but I remember it hit so hard. Like it really hurt my feelings that I had disappointed my mom. Like I, she was like, I didn't raise you to be like this. I don't remember what I did. I couldn't have been anything crazy because I wasn't a bad kid. I was, I was a very good kid. It must have been something like really dumb too. But you know her expressing her disappointment I feel like if you if you really set them down you're like I'm really hurt that you would do this I'm really disappointed in you I feel like that might 
that does hurt a little bit more and it does impact someone, especially someone like me, um, a little bit more. So that would be my tactic or my approach just to express my feelings and then obviously she would get disciplined for it. There wouldn't be no like disciplinary action like, yeah, go home and hang out with your friends. Like she'd be grounded, of course. But I don't know. I feel like that's just a topic that we're going to have to get to that bridge when we get to it and hopefully we cross it well because... I really don't want to have to deal with that. Anna says, do you plan on shrinking your gauges in the future? No, I don't think I'm going to shrink my lobes. They've been at double zero since I was a junior in high school. And I don't know, I don't think I'm ever going to shrink them ever. Even when I go into working in a professional field, um, there's flesh toned ones and there's also ones that look just like big pearls that look like earrings. So I can get away with it, which is fine. Tony Mason says, how long had you and Brian been dating when you said you loved each other? <laughs> uh, well, Brian told me he loved me negative one month. <laughs> he told me before we even started dating that he loved loved me, um, which is so cute and so funny. Um, I told him, I feel like I rushed to say I love you when in high school. Like I had told my previous boyfriend that I loved him and I, I mean he's just like a blip on my radar now. But um, I think I might have told Brian I loved him after like a month or two, honestly. But, but how long had I like, when I like really truly felt love was probably after like a year of like, I felt like true like love for Brian was like after a year. Tao Cohen says, how tall are you? Also, what would your dream house look like? I am 5'5", five five, and my dream house, um, I've talked about this so many times. I want to live in like a suburb. Like I want to live in like a straight suburb where like all the houses look the same, like Edward Scissorhands shit. That's like what I want. Um, no, I do want to live in a suburb, but I definitely want like, if we want another kid, it would probably be like a four bedroom house. Um, with like, and I've been wanting this lately. Like, when I, I go on Zillow all the time and look at houses just for like the fun, just for funs. Um, I've always seen these houses in our area that like if you go up the stairs, there's like this open space before you actually can like go off into individual rooms and some people use it as like a playroom or as like a lounge room, but I would want that more so as just kind of like an office space or even just that open space. And when I look at houses, man, bathrooms are like, mm, I love bathrooms and kitchens. So I love like the stand up showers with the glass doors. Those make my heart like pitter patter. They're so beautiful. And then I love big kitchens. Like I just love kitchens and stuff. I don't know, I've been watching a lot of HGTV, so I got lots of plans for my house, but I'm probably never going to get a dream house like that, but I got lots of plans. He says, are you going to pierce Avery's ears? I think I've talked about this before. Um, I'm not going to do it until she asks me to, until she tells me she wants her ears pierced. I told my mom I wanted my ears pierced when I was in kindergarten, and my mom took me that day and we got them done, so I'm just going to wait till she asks for them, because right now I'm scared to get her ears pierced because I know she would just like yank at it all day, and I just... That's in, like that's just cause for infection. I don't want to deal with that. Katie Tanner says, "Are you and Brian planning a honeymoon with just the two of you? If so, have you decided where you're wh where you'll go?" Um, I don't think we're doing a honeymoon, and if we do, it's not going to be just the two of us. I'll definitely bring Avery, um, but I don't think we're doing a honeymoon. Brent says, "Who's your favorite Walking Dead character?" <laughs> I really like Rick, and I know not a lot of people like Rick. I have like this huge crush on him. I love Rick. I love Daryl. I love Glenn. I have like a crush on all three of them. Like I love all of them so much. Um, but yeah, I like Rick, Daryl, and Glenn um, the most probably. Other than yeah, just them. I don't like anybody else. Like Rick, Daryl, and Glenn. And like if one of them dies, I swear to God, I'm gonna be so mad. Ashley Reinhardt says, "What's been your favorite blue apron me apron meal?" And also, "What's your favorite outfit you've had for Avery?" Um, we unsubscribed to Blue Apron a while ago, but right now we're subscribed to Home Chef. I don't remember if I ever had, like, a super favorite Blue Apron meal, but I'm gonna say my favorite Home Chef meal was the first thing we ever did, which was the pork chops with, like, the cauliflower mash. That was so good. Like, I could eat that right now. Like, if it was put in front of me and I just had dinner, I could eat that entire thing right now. I'd be so happy. And then my favorite outfit Avery's ever had, I don't know, uh, she has so many cute outfits. Like, oh my god, this girl's style, dude. Um... I don't know. Because, like, I really liked her coming home outfit, which was just, like, a little princess onesie. It was so cute. But, like, now in the size she's in now, she has this, like, little, like, cherry pin up -y romper thing. And it's, like, she looks good. She looks so cute in that thing. Like, she looks like a little baby model. She's so cute. Megan Alyssa says, now that you've been doing YouTube for quite a few years, do you see YouTube as your job? And as Avery grows older, do you think that you won't be showing her as much in videos? Or do you think you'll stop recording her when she doesn't want to be recorded anymore? So, I still don't see YouTube as my job. I don't know if I ever will. Um, 
I don't know, I just don't see it as my job. I still make YouTube videos because I love it. Like I genuinely love sitting here and filming these videos for you guys. And lately filming plan with me has been like my like relief. Like I love filming those. Those are some of my favorite videos to film nowadays. But I love filming Ask Kirsten's. Like these are some of the easiest videos to film, but they're the most fun because I literally get to like just tell you guys everything about me that you want to know and I love doing that. Um so yeah, but I, I just don't see it as a job right now. And then um, I think as she grows older, on this channel, I probably won't be showing her as much. I still show her monthly, and I want to show her monthly, do her monthly updates on this channel until she's two. And then I'll probably do them yearly on this channel, if not every, like, bi-yearly. So, like, when she's two and a half, three, three and a half, four. But I think it might just be yearly after that. And then, um... We are trying to daily vlog more. We've been taking like a break from it because it's been kind of hard to daily vlog because I have so many commitments going on right now um, with school and work and this channel and being a mom. Like everything is just wild right now. Um, but we do daily vlog when we do daily vlog and I do show her a lot on there. However, if she asks to not be recorded when she's older, she won't be recorded. That's her choice. I'm not going to take that away from her. Cassidy Hare says, being a younger mom, did you have to go through the criticism and or stigma, so to speak, that surrounds being a young mom? If you could use only one kit or full sticker collection, which collection would you choose and why do you like it so much? Um, I'll do the sticker one first. So if I could choose one collection, it would be either probably my wedding collection, which is coming out July 8th, I think. Um, it's Brian and I's wedding collection. Y'all are going to die because I love it so, so much. Anyway, so the first question about being a young mom. Yes, I feel like I go through the stigma so, so much. There has been so many incidents where people, I mean, I can't even, okay, so many incidents. There's been every single time we go out in public, I get stared at. Um, I feel like I don't get stared at as much if I'm wearing like a full face of makeup and I'm like dressed decently um i don't get stared at as much however if i go out like if i literally just want to run to target with no makeup on my hair up and like shorts and a t-shirt i get judged so hard um but that happens all the time i've gotten used to that what's really annoying is when people say things i've had three instances where someone said something and it's oh my god it's like it's so it's so frustrating i don't even know how to respond half the time without being like a total asshole so um yeah there's been three instances where someone said something and i've just been like what <laughs> but yeah i feel like i go through the stigma all the time and i feel like i'm gonna go through it so often because i still look so young that as avery grows i feel like i'm gonna look the same so it's gonna be rough megan l says since you and brian have been together for so long how has your relationship changed and stayed the same so this is a really interesting question so we've been together it'll be six years when we get married in october um and we started dating in high school. I was 15 when we started dating. He was 16. We started dating when we were so young. And I feel like from now, from then to now, so many things have happened um, as far as like mentally, in our minds, and in our lives. So many things have happened. I feel like we've matured so, so much. And I feel like the only thing that's truly stayed the same with the both of us is just the way we love each other and the way we act around each other. We're both still very like children the way around each other. We're both like joke all the time. But I feel like we've changed a lot because we've grown up together. We've really, we truly have grown up together. We graduated high school together. Um, we lived together in, when, when I, we were 18, we started living together, like, right after we graduated. Or not even right after we graduated. I graduated while living with Brian. And we started college together. We had a daughter. We've moved from... California to North Carolina from North Carolina to Texas together we've done so many things together we've changed so much and but the thing that stayed the same honestly is probably the way we feel about each other I would hope um, at least on my end and um, yeah it's probably the best answer I could give Gabriella Escobar says hi what color will your bridesmaid dresses be what is your favorite chocolate snack and this is a random question but how do you clean your stove top what products do you use so I'm actually not having any bridesmaids so there won't be bridesmaids dresses um, my favorite chocolate snack Kit Kats I love Kit Kats I've loved them for years and clean the stove top when we do clean it because it's always a mess we use a it's a Target brand but it's like a green oh, kitchen cleaner I don't know it's a Target brand though that's all I know Amy Morris says, what were some baby names you liked, boy or girl, but knew you would never use? So there was one name that I came up with because I said earlier I was in charge of the girl name and he was in charge of the boy name. I came up with the name. It was the first name I said and Brian instantly was like, no, he turned it down so fast. And it was Lydia. He didn't like that name. I loved the name Lydia because it was from Lydia from Beetlejuice. I love naming people after other things, except for Avery. 
um, but he said no. So that was the only name that we probably will never use now. The Beauty says, if there was one thing you could change about your life, what would it be? Honestly, I know everyone says this, but I don't think I would change anything. The only thing I feel like I would change is I wish there was more time in the day so I could get more things done, um, or I didn't have so many commitments, but I like that though because it keeps me very busy. So probably that. I get this question so many times. It's from Amy Sandoval. How did you and Andrea meet and how did you start working for Scribble Prince Co.? So Andrea and I met through YouTube a few years ago, probably about three or four years ago. We met through YouTube and we started talking. We did a collab together and then we just continued talking ever since. We texted every day, all day, every day. And then I started working for SPC on accident actually. Um, she had just moved to Texas and we were joking about how I wanted a job and I wanted to work for her. And she said, yeah, so work for me so I came here and I started working for it that's just the gist of it there was more to that but that's basically what happened normal paradise says have you ever thought about becoming vegetarian or vegan and also do you still keep in contact with your friends in California yes I keep in contact with my friends from California have I ever thought about becoming vegetarian or vegan yes and I feel like the way any way I answer this is going to end up being like misconstrued or someone might get offended so I hope this comes across as clearly as I'm trying to project it um, so I have thought about becoming vegetarian or vegan. Right now it's just not something that I want to do. It's just my personal choice. Um, so I hope you guys can understand that and we can we can move, move forward. Kimberly Dominguez says, how was leaving Avery for the first time and do you have any advice for the first time leaving them? So it was rough. I think the first time I actually left Avery was when Brian and I traveled to Texas to see if we actually wanted to live here and work here um, when she was three months old and we left her with my mom for three days and it was really rough um, especially because she was so new she was like so fresh and I had never spent a day without her and I was very I had so much anxiety I was like a freak I like called and texted 24 7 my mom thought I was crazy and it's not that I didn't trust my mom with her I totally trust my mom with her I was just she was my baby you know like my itty bitty three month old baby and I did not want to leave her behind and it made me super super nervous um, but obviously she's fine and any advice <laughs> I can't give you any advice because I'm sure every new mom or every mom is gonna be crazy and text and call 24 7 and that's normal and that's fine <laughs> Sabrina Roman says what are some of your favorite TV shows oh my god I have so many favorite TV shows like I could give you guys lists upon lists of favorite TV shows so I'm just gonna name ones that I'm currently watching because a lot are on off season so currently watching Bachelorette Big Brother uh, Teen Mom, whenever that's on. I think it just went off. Um, Criminal Minds, Walking Dead. I'm currently watching X-Files. I'm actually in season 9. I'm almost done and I kind of want to cry and rewatch it because I love X-Files. Like, oh, oh, I love X-Files. Um, those are the ones I'm currently watching. Oh, and Cutthroat Kitchen I'm currently watching as well. So those are like the ones I'm currently watching that I'm in love with, but I also watch a lot of TV. So, oh, and Orange is the New Black. Hello, I, fe I finished season four in like a day and a half. And if anyone wants to like come sit in a corner with me and like hyperventilate and cry for five minutes, like can we do that? Because no one in my family or in my friend vicinity has finished the season yet and I can't talk to anyone about it and I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm like losing my mind. So... That's a favorite. Diana says, do you and Brian find it hard to find time for yourselves, if you know what I mean with a toddler? Um, yes, we, no, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's, it's, it's easy to find time for ourselves. And then I know you have been doing YouTube for a long time. I've been watching your videos for at least four years. Do you find it frustrating to have a slow growing channel? Do you think you will ever be able to do YouTube full time? I actually don't find it frustrating to have a slow growing channel. I mean, I have been on YouTube for a very long time and I just hit 50,000 subscribers. So thank you guys for that. I'm doing a giveaway very soon. I'm accumulating things currently. Um, but I don't mind it because I, here's why. It's not frustrating. I feel like I want people to subscribe to me if they genuinely like me or they like a certain type of video I do. I know a lot of people subscribed recently because of planner videos and only watch planner videos, which is totally fine with me because I do so many different types of videos now. Um, but I would rather someone subscribe because they genuinely like me and not just to subscribe to another channel. Like I would rather them watch me and not just subscribe and not watch, if that makes sense. So it doesn't bother me too much. Do I think I will ever be able to YouTube, do YouTube full time? Personally, I don't think I will. Um, if it ever gets to that point, that would be really cool, but I just don't see it happening. Lily says, do you and Brian still watch Game of Thrones? Yes, we do. Holly Nicole says, will you be doing any meetups? I live in Texas and would love to meet y'all. I don't think I'm going to be doing any meetups anytime soon. I haven't planned on doing one. Um, 
I will be, I mean this isn't technically a meetup, but I will be at the Scribble Prints planner party, which you have to pay to go to, which is fine because it's like a planner thing. Um, that's not technically, technically a meetup, that's just like a planner get together. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe. Keegan McKenzie says, how do you as a working mom and student keep up with your YouTube subscriptions? It's actually really easy. I watch everything at work. I watch all my TV shows at work. I watch all my YouTube subscriptions at work. I mostly listen though. I don't really like watch unless I'm not doing anything like where I'm moving a lot or like cutting things. Um, where I'm just like sitting there collating. I can watch, like actually watch. But I mostly listen and I do it all at work. Danielle Cruz says, I work in healthcare. I work in guest services at a long-term care facility. What about healthcare administration attracts you? What area do you see yourself working in? And what type of healthcare environment attracts you? So, I actually, I don't remember what got me into healthcare administration with, for my degree. I just remember researching a couple of healthcare degrees because I always knew I wanted to work in healthcare, but I didn't want to be like a doctor. I didn't want to do anything that required me to have to like, mm, not necessarily deal with patients because I'll still be dealing with patients, but I just wanted to do like the bookkeeping aspect of it. That's, what's, that's what I was really interested in. So I think that's when I found healthcare administration and I researched the entire degree and I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want. Um, what area do I see myself working in? I definitely see myself working in either medical records or admissions. I do, I mean, I'm going into healthcare administration to be an administrator. I'm hoping for like a hospital, but we'll see. That's where I think a hospital is mostly where I want to work. I do think I want to work at like a hospital or an urgent care. That's probably all over the place, but that's like my brain right now. The Dancing Ninja says, where do you go to school? I go to Kaplan University. Uh, Angelina Corona says, are you guys going to do a live stream on your other channel anytime soon? I don't know. Um, I don't really have like time. This sounds so crappy because I have time right now, but I know in like five minutes Avery's going to wake up and I need to edit this video and I also have a paper I need to write. But um, we do have time occasionally, but there's not a lot of time that we're together anymore because we both work opposite shifts. So when we are together, we just like cuddle and sleep and maybe go out occasionally. Um, so I don't know, maybe, hopefully, hopefully, because I do really like live streaming. Amy Longo says, if you were a house guest on Big Brother, what would your strategy be slash what type of game would you play? This is so funny because I actually really, really, really considered auditioning for Big Brother this year. Um, it, I... I'm still considering it, it's just, I don't know if I could leave Avery, but I also really think it would be a lot of fun. Anyway, so should I say my strategy? Yeah, I'll say it. So going into Big Brother, I feel like I have sort of the same strategy as a lot of people that actually get pretty far, so I would want to go in and be friends with everybody. You want to be, like, not even just cordial, like, you want to semi be kind of close with people, like, close enough to, like, they tell me things, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I would do. I would go in and be friends with everyone. Personally, I don't think I would be that great at the competitions, especially not any of the physical ones. I think I could possibly get through some of the mental ones, but physical ones, I mean, count me out. Like, I would probably just die. But I think I would want to try and be that person that forms alliances with every alliance that's going around. Um, yeah, I would want to form alliances with everybody, but I would want, like, one or two specific people that I actually, like, really want to be with an alliance with. But I want everyone to think that I am in alliance with them. That might be tricky, but I feel like I could just manipulate it all and be amazing at it, so... I want to be on Big Brother so bad. Alexandra Descova says, what would you do if you didn't have electricity for one day? I don't know. Um, most of the things I do throughout the day require electricity, especially at work. So I probably wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't be able to do anything as far as school goes unless I went to like a Starbucks. I'd probably just sit on my phone. Probably. Until it died. And just play with Avery. Go to the park or something. Elish Tenshi says, when you have another baby, would you prefer a boy or a girl? What gender did you want when you were pregnant with Avery? And do you have any plans to move so Avery has her own room in the future? When I have another baby, would I prefer a boy or a girl? Honestly, I do think I would prefer a boy just so I could have, like, one of each. But I don't think I would be really upset if I had another girl. I think Brian would be a little upset. Not, like, mad, but I think he'd be kind of upset knowing that he is, like, completely overrun in the house. Um, but I do think I want another... I do want a boy. But I wouldn't be mad with a girl. Uh, what gender did I want when I was pregnant with Avery? I did want a girl. We both really, 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 really wanted a girl when we found out I was pregnant. Um, and yes, we are moving at the end of July. Um, Maria's... I cannot pronounce this name. I'm super sorry. Did you ever have braces or Invisalign? Yes, I had braces from 7th grade to 8th grade, so about two years. And I have Invisalign now, and I don't see myself... I think I'm supposed to have it for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I've had Invisalign since I was a freshman in high school, and I think I'm supposed to have it for the rest of my life, so... 
that's that. This question is from Ashley Taylor, at least the questions I can see on my phone. For some reason my phone doesn't show all the comments, it's kind of annoying. Um, and she says, what foundation have you been using? So I'm currently using two different foundations. The one I'm using today is the Tarte Amazonian Clay. The Tarte Amazonian Clay foundation. It's full coverage, it's really, really nice. I used it because I have a huge pimple right here and it's really bothering me. Um, but the other foundation I'm really obsessed with is the Revlon Colorstay. So that is it for Ask Kirsten number 28. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, literally any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want me to tell stories, leave them in the comments below. I'll tell you some stories. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.